All right, we are live. So welcome to Office Hours with Arrow, a LinkedIn Live event hosted by Arrow leaders who care about what senior living looks like. I'm your host and producer, Rachel Sheehan, and today's topic is all about successful partnerships. And I'm so excited to have back Derek Harris, repeating guest on my LinkedIn Live, um, just one of my favorite guests. Sorry, everyone else, but um, it's just been great to have Derek on. So Derek pulled together a couple um, non-Aero guests here. So I'm excited. This is our first um, event with outside guests. So Derek, do you want to just introduce yourself again real briefly, and then we'll get to the others? Absolutely. Hey, everybody. My name is Derek Harris. I'm the Managing Director of Wellness Integration with Aero Senior Management, Aero Senior Living Management. Um, so a major part of my role is working with a lot of our partners. Um, so I brought together some amazing people for us to have this conversation today. Awesome. Thank you. And I would love to know from you three, um, we'll start with Vince, but tell me, tell us all who you are, you know, what you do, what your company does. Sounds great. So first of all, thank you for, for having me. Thanks for having all of us. This is a, this is a fun topic to discuss. Uh, so let me introduce myself. My name is Vin Casito. I'm uh, one of the co-founders of Inspiring, and uh, I lead our customer engagement really across all of our customers and key partners. Um, and my real, my main job is to make sure that Augie, which is our platform, which I'll talk about in a second here, um, is deployed successfully across all the communities at, at Arrow. Uh, and not just deployed successfully, but also after we deploy, making sure that we get value out of our out of our platform. So. A little bit about Augie. Uh, so, um, well, a little bit about Inspiring, actually. So, Inspiring is, is a nurse led, nurse founded organization. I'm more on the technology and delivery side of things, but everything we do, every product and feature we put together is focused on how do we help the caregiver provide the best care possible for your residents. So, um, Augie is our hybrid sensing platform. We have a, a, a hardware technology that we deploy and install within senior living communities. And what we do is we collect the identified privatized behavioral data of residents. And we work really closely with all the clinical leaders at each of the communities to make sure we help them ensure safety, ensure staff efficiency, and ultimately ensure that the care plans that are being delivered, which I know are so important to Arrow, tailored care plans for each resident, uh, that we are a piece of the puzzle in supporting that process. So uh, very excited to be here and uh, I'll pass I'll pass it along. Awesome. Thank you. Brooke, do you want to go next? Absolutely. Yes. Thank you guys for having me. Just really appreciate the opportunity. Um, I'm Brooke Decker. I'm a regional VP with Empower Me Wellness. And uh, really my role with the company is to work with uh, the partners, um, senior living operators specifically to help bring our services to the community and really just solve problems that they see on a day-to-day -day basis, whether that be, you know, helping them reduce falls, um, like Vince alluded to, like the goal is to provide the best care for the resident. And that's what we're all partnering. You know, that's our, that's everyone's goal. And so we want to help residents age in place, um, increase resident engagement through our wellness programming, and ultimately make sure that those residents just really love where they live. Awesome. Love that. All right. Last but not least, Allison. Thank you again, as they said, for having um, all of us here. I am Allison Boweyer uh, with Everspring Pharmacy. And officially, I think my title is uh, Vice President of Pharmacy Integration and Development. Uh, I like to say I kind of do whatever they need me to do. And I work with, um, since Everspring is the pharmacy side of Empower Me, we work um, very closely with the physical therapist, with, with the nurse practitioners, along with the consultant pharmacist and uh, the partnership to make sure that we are helping um, Aero have good outcomes. So not only do we work with Aero, but we work with all the physicians, all of the communities, uh, sometimes with the families, um, anything and everything that has to do with medication management. So very proud that we were one of the first partners uh, with Aero from their very first community. So this has been a, a long-standing relationship and one that we're very, very proud of. Awesome. Incredible. So a follow-up question for each of you. Um, what to you, does partnership mean? You know, what's the most important thing about a partnership? So, whoever wants to take that one first, I'll go. Uh, 
Uh, so for anyone that joined our joint commission session, um, I'll steal something from them. So collaborative and collegial. Um, so a great partnership will always have those two components. Um, you know, these are going to be people where we share common goals, which would be, of course, bettering the lifestyle of our residents and then bettering the senior living industry. Um, you know, these are going to be people who are an extension of our team, so to say. So the companies, they need to share very common core values and almost just become so intertwined with our operation where you really don't know, does this therapist walking down the hallway or does this consultant pharmacist, do they work for us or do they work for a third party provider? And that's how you really know that it is a great partnership. And you know, last but not least on that point, I would say that a good partnership, these are people that we enjoy meeting with. Uh, we were kind of joking around before joining today. Um, I don't know if a day goes by that I don't text or call or have something going on with Brooke. I'm always on in some way with Allison and same thing with Vin. You know, these are people when I see their name come across my phone or when I'm joining a call, I'm excited to see them. And it's not because we're friends or anything like that. It's just because we have all those common denominators going on for us that makes it a great partnership and therefore a great working relationship. I'm happy to, to go next. Uh, you know, I, I totally agree, Derek. I think for, for me personally, like one of the things that I think it's just so essential is that myself, really any of your partners understand like what is Arrow trying to achieve, right? Like what are your goals uh, for the short term and the long term? Because if I understand that, then I have a much better shot at figuring out how does our product and service better fit into helping you achieve those goals in the short term and the long term. It also can help us shape from a product perspective, like what do we need to do to kind of make sure that we're 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 working and developing in the right direction to to meet your needs. So I think that's to me the most important thing. That's the anchor as I see it. And the last thing I'll say on it is that it's not just at an org level; it's also at a community level too. Because every community is different. Every community has their own vision and their own goals. And I think it's important that even at that level we understand it, so that when we do deploy, whether it's Empower Me services or you know, Augie capabilities and products, it's more around like you know, it's that same tailored approach of like, how do we help you achieve those goals? And it's got to be at both levels. And I think that's the anchor. If you have that in place, then the work you do afterwards and the tactical stuff, it all is li aligned with the, you know, what you're trying to achieve. So uh, I think that's kind of what you said, Derek, but I, I have to agree. That's that's the biggest thing. Awesome. Yeah, I will just kind of piggyback off of what Derek said, like, the kind of energy that we share, the excitement towards that common goal is is fostering a culture that is unlike none other. Um, and I think keeping in mind on a daily basis what we're doing, are we delivering value? What value are we bringing to each other? How are we working together um, for the common good of the residents? And so um, just thinking about what is our service offering, you know, AI, pharmacy, integrated healthcare services, like how are we collectively contributing to the overall success of our client. And just to add to that for, for us, especially, you know, on a pharmacy standpoint, like what are the trends? Um, what are the communication trends? What's happening in the industry uh, as far as medication changes that may be affecting the residents? What kind of open communication can we um, talk through when we have maybe gaps um, you know, from a pharmacy standpoint, we may think we're doing brilliantly. Um, and then we find out um, through the partnership that um, what we think we are doing may not be as well received. So the open communication, the, the visibility to be able to say, hey, this is working well here, but with here we have, it's a newer community, that open communication and the flexibility to be able to kind of in the middle of a of a problem in the middle of a, a survey uh, that you can really call and say, hey, I need all hands on deck. So I think that's the, the favorite part of the partnership. And I know for us, we were very, very proud in the fact that when Arrow started their joint commission journey, that we were the pharmacy of record because we learned right along with them. We were able to enhance some of our offerings. We were able to tweak some of the things that we were doing um, and to really get a different perspective just from that joint commission perspective was extremely helpful to us as uh, as a company. Uh, for me as a nurse, uh, it, it helped all of those things kind of come together and really be beneficial. 
Love that. Thank you all for sharing that. I also realized, because Amanda and Stephanie both commented about your matching shirts, Brooke and Derek. Oh, Tell yes. us a little bit about, about those. Derek, yeah, you go ahead. Sure, yeah. So at our, was it the 2023 retreat? I think it was 2023 mm -hmm. in uh, Arizona. And Power Me and Everspring, they teamed up forces and they were our sponsors. Uh, they actually did the Bestie sponsorship. So part of the thing was Arrow had swag made, which Allison, she did some remodeling. She's looking for her shirt. She was not able to find it. Mm -hmm. She would normally be wearing one too. But we had these shirts made and the uh, saying goes that whenever we're traveling to a national conference or anything like that, this is also the shirt of choice, just showing that Everspring and Empower Me are the Aero Besties. I love it. That's awesome. Um, we also, before we go on, we already have a question. So Stephanie asked us, what is your vision as to how senior living will change and how your products and services must evolve to meet those needs? Anybody want to take a stab at that one? I'll go first as far as I think um, as technology changes uh, from a pharmacy standpoint, because we integrate with the with the EMAR. Um, I think that as those things change, we all have to up our game. Um, I know as a nurse who, you know, back in my day, there was no clinical informatics. That was not a major. Uh, and I have been um, forced at times to kind of become one. And I think for us really looking at the technology and how it can help us. We use Metaprocity, which is an instant messaging system to where these younger staff, they don't wanna pick up the phone and call the pharmacy and they certainly don't wanna use a fax machine. Um, so how dare we, you know, because they're young and hip and fun. Uh, and so the things that we're doing such as Metaprocity to where they can text message the pharmacy and then our young staff can, can text right back and from from a corporate level and a visibility level, it's great because there's always date and time stamped communication. Um, for our business reviews, we can show that the trends, like which community um, maybe is is using it really well. And most of the time we find that those, those communities really, really love pharmacy for the ones that aren't using it. Sometimes there's some communication gaps and it really takes away a lot of the he said, she said. So I think for us, and especially with the physicians using e-scripts and things like that, um, it's allowing us to work smarter and not harder um, so we can make sure we do have the visibility into the holistic approach to make sure we're taking care of the resident. Awesome. Anybody else want to touch on that? I would just add, um, we're, we're starting to leverage technology as well with our um excuse me, patient portals, just to make sure that we're able to communicate consistently to caregivers and POAs, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and I think that's really important to make sure that they're kept in the loop on the status of their loved ones. But with some additional care coordination programming that we're, you know, launching called Empower Me 360, that allows for still that old fashioned touch point of a phone call. And I think that's really important because, you know, sometimes people really aren't adapting the technology, you know, and would appreciate just having a, a real conversation. And so with those consistent weekly touch points where we're checking in on residents, we're going to be able to call those family members that live out of state and wish they could check in on a weekly basis and they just can't. Sure. Ben, you have anything? Yeah, I'll, I'll add a, a few more to that. And just quick comment, I feel a little left out. They don't have swag, but we're going to we're going to fix that. We're gonna <laughs> we'll fix that, that. Right? Don't worry, we'll it's coming. Um, you got to tell me where you're going next, because I'm going to come out there uh, to meet with you. But uh, no, I, I would say that the, the way that we think about it is it's, you know, we're, we're starting to think we're not just starting to we have been it's about it's about staff efficiency, right? It's about efficiency of giving mm -hmm. care. And I think as we when we think about that, yes, there's product related things that we need to do to support that. But I also think about a little more broadly about the consolidation of technology, right? Because part of staff efficiency isn't just, you know, the, the actual care you deliver, but it's also what tools do you use on a daily basis? Because if you have too many tools, well, then you start to go against that efficiency goal. So we, we're thinking really, you know, long term and, and short term about how, how can we consolidate technology so that um, there's less there's less things you have to do that aren't essential to the care process, right? So we're constantly focused on those things. And I think that's where the industry needs to move. And that's that's what we're doing. That's what our plan is for the future. Awesome. 
Great. I love all that. Um, so switching now to a little bit different topic that we wanted to touch on, Derek, will you explain the quarterly partnership reviews to us? Absolutely. So I'm part of a team that developed the quarterly partnership reviews that we go through with several of our larger partners. Those are uh, partners who service a significant quantity of our communities, or they're more of what we would call a national level provider. Um, so anyone that knows anything about Arrow, we are very data and metric driven. Um, if there's not data to back something up, then in some cases we say that that doesn't exist. Uh, we love our data. So we started looking into our partnerships and we're very cautious about entering into new partnerships. We want to make sure that we're making the right choice for our residents, for our communities, for the families that we serve. So one of the things that we did was we put together these partnership reviews just to get a idea of how are things going and where do we want things to go in the future as far as these partnerships go. We developed a list of questions that we would ask any partner. It doesn't matter if you are a rehab provider, a technology provider, a dietitian, et cetera. Basically, these questions just make sure, do you align with our core values and the route that we are taking? So every provider gets the same list of questions. And when we review those with our partners, we're able to actually trend and see how are things going. And when we talk about goals, of where do we want things to go or where do we need to improve? We can work on that quarter after quarter just to make sure that we're reaching those goals and to make sure that this partnership is on track. And it also helps us to make sure that we're maintaining our KPIs or our key performance indicators as well. Um, so like I said, I not that that's totally proprietary to Arrow, but I understand that we're a little bit unique in the sense that we do that, but it's been really great for us just to make sure that we're aligning. Yeah. Awesome. So Brooke, Allison, Ben, do you want to talk about mm -hmm. kind of feedback on those um, partnership reviews and just, you know, when that came up and how, how it's been going and that kind of thing? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in. So that was kind of a newer process for us. Um, you know, Arrow, when they brought that idea to us, I'm like, wow, that's actually fantastic. I love that idea. And I love that they're taking the time to, you know, work with us on collaborating on some of those questions and just, you know, the feedback is incredible. And it's very important that we understand, you know, where are we exceeding expectations? Where are we, where do we need to improve? And then we can have a, a detailed conversation um, about what that looks like at specific communities um, and provide a little bit more focus into those areas. So um, the feedback is is awesome. I think another thing about our partnership reviews is, is important to have kind of an open discussion, a place where we feel like we can come to the table with, you know, concerns or issues, but then also celebrating successes. I think that's a big thing is like sharing common gratitude about like, hey, your team helped us did this and look at the amazing outcomes that we saw together because of our partnership. And even Ben, um, he's gotten in on our partnership reviews too. I'm like, hey, provide me some data about like what you're seeing and then how that translates to our team to produce better resident outcomes. And it's just, it's been really cool to see. That's awesome. And I'll, I'll jump in next. You know, for us, it really, to me, it's kind of a roadmap. It kind of tells us where we're going. Um, it's a it's a common conversation to kind of see what's next for the quarter, goals that they're working on. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, when we have those discussions and you say, what problem are you trying to solve? Um, from a physical therapy uh, nurse practitioner standpoint, the 360 and the pharmacy, you know, a lot of times the forgotten consultant pharmacist, I like to say, because there's so many things as far as psychotropic medications and things like that, that we review. So ours is a clinical review and a business review. And literally like looking at the, the most recent Aero data, they're on 16 medications per resident. So when you look at that number of medications and all the physicians, all the side effects, all the things that go along with that, we can really be collaborative in the fact that we can show Arrow, that community, um, you know, that data, but also then if all these medications that may be high risk for falls, we can be proactive and work with the therapy teams to say, hey, this community has, you know, really high psychotropic use, you know, let's put some extra eyes there. So I think it's an additional resource that, we find in these business reviews, you know, if there's if there's a problem or there's a need, 
we know um, really quickly and we can, one of the things that we did with communication from one of the surveys, we literally dedicated an arrow email that goes to our internal pharmacy team. So communication, we were struggling in some places because they didn't know who to email. You know, if my med cart's broken, if my fax machine's not working, if the order didn't come, you know, all these things. So we kind of put our heads together and said, all right, let's create just an arrow RX email. And then it directs to the internal arrow team in our pharmacy. And then that way we can assure that um, the need is heard and seen and met. And then it's, we can also monitor those. So now we can report in our quarterly business reviews, how many emails came through that, um, how many community messages came through Metaprocity, like I was talking about earlier. So it gives us a lot of data and metrics that we can measure which is good for us, but it also is a roadmap to say, hey, we've improved here. Maybe we need to work on this. You know, we're always under construction. We're always learning. We're always trying to get better. And I think the business reviews are very good for us personally, just as the clinical indicators, their KPIs, and then things where we need to grow and or partner better on. So it gives us those those talking points. That's great. I love that solution you came up with. I think that's clever. So good job. Ben, you have something to add? Just not too much more, honestly. I think Brooke and Allison covered the majority of it. it it's all, they're great meetings to have. I would even venture to say that there's even opportunity to, you know, start the conversation leading, leading into business review so that when you get to a business review, it's not all new information for everybody. And I think there's like a, a really nice opportunity to find the right cadence of communication with, um, you know, with, with our leadership, with any uh, customer community you work with. So I, I think there's that, that's something that's interesting. Uh, I think as far as the, the business reviews themselves, I mean, everything that was said, I, I'm not going to repeat it. I would say just that personal experience, I think the surveys you do, Derek, I think are really important because you're getting both quantitative feedback, but also qualitative feedback. And I think the qualitative feedback is always interesting because it's you know, it's a, it's a famous saying, it's like, you don't remember what was what was said, but you remember how it made you feel, right? And it's like the experience mm -hmm. that folks have with your product or service. You got to understand that because you may not get that in your biweekly conversations with folks, right? You're always focused on the tactics. So getting that feedback is so important. I think we learned in one of our communities that we were working with, Eric was like, hey, we, we probably should have started clinical success process a bit faster. Than we than we did right and hey you're never it's never going to be perfect right there's always going to be things you can improve on and if you can find those things out i mean even ideally before a business review you can start to take action and figure out what's the plan how do we how do we turn this around and change it and uh you know continue the path to perfection right which is always the uh the way you should think about it so that's what i would add to that I'd like to add on to that, Vin. Um, so it, something that related to Everspring, we were getting ready for our quarterly and, you know, we we're always reviewing the data before we actually meet. That way we can actually come to the table ready to discuss and coming up with action plans. And I remember we had a community that they put it in their survey that they were down to one or two pharmacy laptops and they were the nurses were sharing laptops back and forth i remember reading this thinking no 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 why didn't uh, this is such an easy thing to fix it took one text message to the pharmacy saying like hey we're down mm -hmm. to two laptops and even those mm -hmm. they're probably ready for replacement can we get four more and boom i mean it was just so easy and sometimes those concerns or needs don't always get communicated so i, I would say there's been several times where we've learned something and you know, for us, it seems like an easy fix, but sometimes, like Allison said, people sometimes don't know who to reach out to because there's various point people and things like that. So there's definitely been a lot of aha moments and times where we realize, wow, I can make your life so much easier um, if I had known this. So easy fix. Let's get it fixed now. So that definitely adds to the value for sure. And I forgot too, I, I joined their weekly uh, director of wellness calls and I also hold office hours for Arrow. So uh, we, we found that sometimes in, especially new employees in the big group setting are maybe embarrassed or not, don't know exactly how to phrase a question. So the suggestion was made in one of the business reviews, what about holding office hours? So I do. So now people can pop in. It may be like today, you know, it was, hey, my med cart's got a crack across the top of it you know, can I get a new one or can somebody fix mm -hmm. it? And I'm like, sure. You know, and so she took the phone, you know, showed me what was wrong, got me the serial number. And and like Derek alluded to, it's an easy fix for us, but 
I'm not a mind reader. So sometimes I don't know what's going on in the community unless they show me or tell me. So, you know, just being easy to do business with, I think, is is the thing that we try hardest um, to to be, you know, like maybe I don't know the answer, but I'll find it for you. Um, so I think that relationship and that the easiness of, hey, can, are you the person to help me or at least guide me? I think that's what a true partnership is, where the conversations are easy. There's never judgment. You know, it's just, hey, can you help me? And, and we want to be that easy help button uh, that can that can help people. Um, and if it's, if it is something therapy, then I just call Brooke and say, Hey, you know, mm -hmm. how, how does it go? So we all are very collaborative and we work well as a team and it's not us versus them or you versus us. It's just, Hey, we all work together and um, try to try to get the end result and, and help the staff and help the residents. Yeah. And that leads perfectly into my next question for you. How, are you guys integrated? You know, how do these partnerships work together? I mean, we have a rehab company, pharmacy, and then a fall health system. So how did you come together? What was that like? The amazing Derek brought us all together. <laughs> um, he is amazing, uh, isn't he? The amazing Derek brought us all together. Um, you know, from well, the Everspring relationship was pre-Derek. I didn't come it was around until 2011, so someone else, right someone else gets that credit. <laughs> that's right. Um, you know, but that's a good question. I think that every time we meet, um, we collaborate and we come up with really good ideas. Um, and it may not be solved, you know, if there's a problem we're trying to solve in that moment. It may not be solved in that business review, but we all go back with a different perspective and we talk through it and go back to our teams and say, hey, this is what we're trying to do or, um, you know, and we just really um, collaborate a lot. And it's pretty easy because, you know, the residents' well-being is really all of our goal. Um, mm -hmm. And so we just kind of work together to say, hey, what if you do this? Hey, what if we do this? And it, it's really a lot of open conversation, a lot of a lot of collaboration and then some just good old fashioned brain power. <laughs> you know, we just really try to figure out what's going to work and how it's going to work. Mm -hmm. That. Yeah. I would say for me, it's it's all about understanding how the other people's like what they're day in and day out and like how the, the nuances of like what it is that they do. Right. So like to be able to provide feedback to Vin on how his product works well for us and for Arrow, like I need to understand exactly what it does, what it looks like. I need to see it, you know, touch it, feel it kind of thing. So like a lot of times with new community uh, implementations or orientations, we will all come on site and we will do kind of like a presentation to the staff and we sit in on each other's presentations. We'll chime in and say, hey, what about this? And this would be great if, you know, it had this type of feature. And and honestly, I'm just kind of trying to absorb and understand and, and learn their product better. That's awesome. Yeah, I, what I would last, because I know we're probably close to time, I think, um, you know, going back to the whole idea of understanding what Arrow's goals are, for example, right? Mm -hmm. To extend on that, it's to understand, like, what's the ecosystem of partnership that exists to help them get to those goals, right? So if you think about it that way, you'll ask the right question. What services do you provide? Because, again, you know, mm -hmm. if you want to provide the best experience for your customer, you got to know, like, what are all the spokes in the wheel? Just a last quick example, you know, you mentioned Brooke, how we work together. I mean, what we do today is that we meet with Empower Me on a monthly basis and almost have our own business reviews where it's like, mm -hmm. what's working? What's not working? How can we improve? Because again, all with the goal of trying to help Arrow. And I think what's also really exciting is that even in our own, like Inspirant's own clinical conversations that we're having with each community, we're also inviting the, you know, the Empower Me team into those conversations. Let's all be, let's all hear the same thing. Like, let's all hear the same mm -hmm. thing, talk about the same insights and data, because then we don't have to play telephone and we could actually all on the spot think about, hey, here's an opportunity for more services to be provided to this resident who needs it. And, you know, it happens faster. So I think like if you're connected, you're trying to get better constantly and you're all, again, united, right? Ultimately on the same goal. Um, you know, that, that's really what I think makes the difference. So it's been a very exciting uh, journey for sure with you guys. I would say the power of word of mouth. So we all know that Everspring is a very old partner of ours, but it was when um, Empower Me and Everspring were going through their uniting together 
that the owner of Everspring was saying like, hey, I need to tell you about this group. They're amazing. And then it wasn't too long later that the owner of Empower Me was saying, hey, I need to tell you about this group. They're amazing. And that group just so happened to be inspiring. I guess they had caught a demo or something like that. And then this big McKnight's article dropped that was all about inspiring. And it's just really interesting, I, you know, just how we our web has continued to go. And I just wonder who is the next person, you know, like inspiring your dude and introduce us to someone now that'll just continue <laughs> to make this web yeah. of people working together with that common goal. So we're blessed to have all of you with us. I love that. And I just want to thank you all for being here today because I learned so much. I'm sure all of our viewers learned so much and I think we did it. So I just want to thank you once again. Um, next week, we will be here same place, same time, but we have a little bit different topic talking about senior living design. So I hope you all join me for that. But for now, we'll say goodbye. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you so much. Great being Bye. here. Take care.